SpaceX has just taken a major leap forward with Starship. After weeks of preparation and critical upgrades, the massive stainless steel rocket has once again fired up its engines directly from the orbital launch mount. SpaceX just reached a major milestone. Ship 37 has officially completed a full static fire test on the orbital launch mount. This is a key step toward the long-awaited Starship Flight 10, now aiming for launch this month. Here's what SpaceX just did to bring the world's most powerful rocket one step closer to orbit. But it wasn't all smooth sailing, unusual issues cropped up during testing, raising serious questions about the readiness of the vehicle. What did SpaceX achieve, and what strange problems are engineers now racing to solve? Let's break it all down. Starship roared back to life with Ship 37 completing its long-awaited single-engine test, an exciting milestone that brings the next launch one step closer. SpaceX has conducted a single-engine static fire for Starship Flight 10, Ship 37, on the orbital launch mount. Just 40 days after the Ship 36 incident, Ship 37 was rolled out to the new testing infrastructure. At Starbase, marking a swift and confident recovery. On the launch pad, this is incredible because just a month ago, Ship 36 exploded during a test at masses which destroyed that entire testing site. SpaceX was able to adapt the orbital launch mount to conduct a static fire, which is probably one of the most moves ever seen SpaceX make. Following some minor delays, including a scheduling conflict and an earlier test abort, the highly anticipated static fire took place early on the 31st. In preparation, SpaceX also tested the detonation suppression system and cleared surrounding areas to establish a secure safety perimeter. By midday, ground systems across both the tank farm and orbital launch mount were fully powered. The implementing confirmed active fuel loading and frost began forming around the tanks, clearly showing that propellant transfer was underway. Observers noted that the fuel configuration matched a low-volume setup, approximately one-third capacity for the liquid oxygen tank and a small amount of methane, indicative of a planned single-enchant static fire. Meanwhile, SpaceX also performed a brief test of the vehicle's aerodynamic flaps. Shortly after fuel loading was confirmed, the static fire sequence began. First, the water deluge system was activated, a significant moment, as the system is typically used only for high-thrust engine tests. Its inclusion in a single-engine test highlighted both the improved reliability of the updated infrastructure and SpaceX's commitment to simulating full launch conditions as accurately as possible. Then, the sea-level Raptor engine on Ship 37 ignited. For about six to seven seconds, the engine produced a stable, uninterrupted burn. This test appeared consistent throughout the test with no evidence of throttling or Anomalies. Once the burn concluded, the shutdown process executed cleanly. SpaceX later confirmed on X, Starship's single-engine static fire demonstrating an in-space burn. Complete on Pad 1 at Starbase. This successful test marked several key achievements. First, it validated the compatibility of Ship 37 with the new ground systems and confirmed the readiness of the orbital launch mount. Second, it proved that infrequently used infrastructure such as the water deluge and detonation suppression systems remains in optimal condition. Most importantly, it showed that critical systems damaged or stressed during the Ship 36 event have been restored or reinforced to handle future tests. However, this milestone is only the beginning. Now, of course, they'll still need to do another static fire of all six engines, and that will come next. A full six-engine static fire will still be required to certify Ship 37 for flight. That test will be essential for evaluating the performance of all Raptors and for re-qualifying. Several support systems, including the high-pressure cops that are vital for controlling tank pressures during ascent. These vessels were at the heart of the failure during Ship 30 SIXS earlier static fire attempt. This could signal the end of test activity at the current pad, potentially to prepare for Ship 37's return to the build site for further integration. Nevertheless, the start of August now looks like the most probable window for the six-engine test. Regardless of the exact timing, SpaceX teams appear ready to act quickly, maintaining flexibility for rapid deployment once conditions allow. The successful single-engine test also adds momentum to the Flight 10 timeline. 
Altogether, the road to Flight 10 is beginning to take shape, but whether SpaceX can meet its target of launching in the first half of August remains to be seen. That timeline hinges on several key milestones. The full static fire test of Ship 37, the reinstallation of its engines and protective flaps, full pad refurbishment, and a successful set of integrated system checkouts and wet dress rehearsals. And remember, this is the first standalone ship static fire on the launch mount. So it's pretty impressive that they're able to do this and it's making an August launch for SpaceX looking more and more likely. Altogether, the road to Flight 10 is beginning to take shape, but whether SpaceX can meet its target of launching in the first half of August remains to be seen. That timeline hinges on several key milestones. The full static fire test of Ship 37, the reinstallation of its engines and protective flaps, full pad refurbishment, and a successful set of integrated system checkouts and wet dress rehearsals. So of course, I'll keep you apprised of any new details, but I did want to share this because yes, it finally happened. What do you think? Will SpaceX make the deadline? Let us know your thoughts in the comments with a yes or a no, and feel free to include your own launch date prediction. As for us, we are tentatively eyeing August 14th, the midpoint between the early and late. Windows is the most realistic option. If you are excited about the progress SpaceX is making, support our coverage by liking the video and subscribing to our channel. This event was not only significant because of the test itself, but also because it marked a fast return to action for the Starship program after the recent incident at Massey. The anticipation surrounding this test was high, as it promised to reignite momentum at Starbase and possibly deliver a powerful milestone in the ongoing journey toward Flight 10. Unfortunately, the highly anticipated test that could have shaken the launch site did not take place. Let us walk through the events leading up to the aborted attempt. On the morning of July 30th, a number of ground operations were underway to prepare for the test. Key equipment, including the crane, engine work platform, the chopsticks lift arms, and the ship quick disconnect arm were all moved or adjusted. These procedures signaled that SpaceX was gearing up for the big moment. Soon after, both the coastal region and the Axis Road were closed off, which was in line with the usual safety protocol for such tests. By midday and into the early afternoon, several important steps in the testing sequence were carried out. First, the igniter system for Ship 37 was successfully tested. This was followed by the activation of the detonation suppression system, which helps minimize damage in the event of any unexpected combustion. During this phase, venting could be observed beneath the orbital launch mount. Not long after, more intense venting appeared at the tank farm. A clear sign that propellant loading had begun. This step was confirmed when frost formed along the exterior of Ship 37's tanks, indicating cryogenic fuel was being pumped in. Based on the extent of the frost, the amounts of fuel loaded seemed relatively low suggesting that SpaceX was aiming for a single-engine static fire rather than a full-engine firing. Everything seemed to be proceeding smoothly, but when the critical moment arrived, nothing happened. The static fire never took place. Instead, venting increased again, and signs of detanking began to show. The liquid fuel was being removed from the vehicle, and it became clear that SpaceX had chosen to abort the test. Almost immediately, the reason for the halt was identified. A range violation had occurred. This typically means that a ship, vehicle, or aircraft had entered the safety exclusion zone surrounding the test area. In such situations, SpaceX is obligated to cancel operations in order to maintain safety. While the situation was disappointing, it was a reminder of how crucial coordination and caution are when handling volatile rocket fuel in high pressure test environments. At the time of the abort, several hours still remained within the designated test window. There was even hope that SpaceX might attempt a second fueling and proceed with the test. For a short time, this seemed likely, as the fueling process appeared to restart. But before long, signs emerged that the attempt was being fully wrapped up. Vending at the orbital launch mount ceased, while vending from the ship itself increased. These indicators confirmed that the test attempt for July 30th had officially ended. In the latest imagery and activity updates from Starbase, we can now see that the quick 
disconnect arm had been retracted and the chopsticks had been lowered. These moves suggest that ground teams are performing post-test inspections and possibly reinforcing structures for the next attempt. Fortunately, the wait may not be long. The next test window was already set for July 31st, meaning SpaceX had just 12 hours between windows to reset operations and improve their chances of a successful test. The unexpected delay, while frustrating at least came from an external factor rather than a technical issue with the vehicle or support systems. That provides confidence that the next attempt will move forward with minimal complications. This brief gap between test windows also gives the SpaceX team an opportunity to make further improvements. For example, the lowered chopsticks could allow for detailed inspections or adjustments to the launch mount or additional bracing to better prepare for engine ignition forces. As for what to expect in the next round, it is still unclear whether the test will involve only a single engine or a full engine static fire. However, given the progress made and the urgency of upcoming milestones, a full engine firing seems likely. If that test is completed without issues, SpaceX may follow it up with a single engine test on the same day, or they could schedule a separate test window in the near future. Either way, the next attempt will be critical in validating Ship 37 and confirming readiness for Flight 10. This flight will play a major role in unlocking further progress for the Starship program, particularly as attention turns toward the eventual goals of orbital refueling, lunar missions, and Mars. So if you are watching and waiting alongside us, stay alert. By the time you see this update, the next test attempt may already be underway or even completed. Let us all hope there are no further delays and that the test is a complete success. If it is, it will represent another strong step forward for the SpaceX team and their ambitious plans for the future. If you're still supporting the mission, respond with, I'm still waiting in the comments. Then be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel so you can continue following the remarkable development journey of SpaceX and Starship to offset the disappointment from Ship 37's aborted test. SpaceX has achieved a major milestone with Ship 38. Recently moved into position, Ship 38 has now completed its cryogenic proof test, an essential step confirming the structural integrity and tank performance under extreme cold. Before testing again, light venting and a payload door check were observed. Then at noon on the 30th, the cryogenic test officially commenced. Strong venting signaled full capacity fuel loading with frost rings forming on both the methane and liquid oxygen tanks. This success also confirmed that the tank farm and fuel systems were fully functional or had been restored following the Ship 36 incident. After several hours, detanking procedures were carried out, completing the cryogenic test and verifying Ship 38's readiness. For further testing, closure notices show Ship 38 will return to make a bait 2 between July 31st and August 1st for inspections. There it will receive engine installation, flap integration, and final heat shield work before advancing to the next phase, where its static fire will take. Place remains uncertain. PADA may be available until post-Flight 10 refurbishment, while Massey will require confirmation of new infrastructure like a ship QD arm or upgraded test stand. Together, these steps signal SpaceX's intent to accelerate Starship's launch cadence but much still hinges on the success of Flight 10. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member so click on our perks through the link the description below thanks to watching and see you next time